My name's Sarah Toombs and I'm the curator of Material Matters. I was asked to curate this exhibition, a sculpture exhibition, uh, for Elysium um, Gallery. And I really wanted to engage with sculptors who made things um, and worked with materials and handled materials and transformed materials and kind of think through materials, really. And I felt it was really important to kind of address that idea of working with materials in the age of you know, the era of AI really, the era of um, having a lot of digital work, but I wanted to present work that had been touched by the human hand. And so that's why I chose these sculptors. I also wanted to choose four sculptors who, they, they, they work with traditional, but also non-traditional materials, and they combine them, they kind of mash them up in really interesting ways. So, for example, Lee Grandjean, he is, I would consider him as a, as a carver predominantly. But actually, he carves wood and then he, he cuts it up and re, you know, he, he kind of reworks it and then he adds bits of concrete in and then he puts colour on it. So I'm quite interested in moving from this flat thing, which in a sense is how you see image in the brain, you know, and how it then it comes out as drawing, to how it then moves from that flat into form, into this kind of a reality which can sit in the world, you know. So I mean, what I want is to have a a really complete sense that whatever form is there has been built from nothing out, you know. So any surface is a result of a, the three-dimensional process, you know. I don't impose a surface on. And the render is just, I like render because it's like the everyday building process, you know. Probably the first surface I touched in London was a a rendered cement wall, do you know what I mean? As I graze my hand trying to negotiate an alley on a small tricycle, do you know what I mean? Similarly, um, what I liked about Andrew Savin's work is <laughs> there is colour within the material. He uses pigmented materials. And I also think what's interesting about his work as well is he uses margarine and then he casts into it in these very highly coloured polyurethanes and, and plastics and cement. And so he gets this incredible quality in the material. The materials do speak to you. They, they exude, you know, they exude this sort of luminescent colour, which is quite otherworldly. It's quite, it's, it's quite ethereal as well. So it's the materials that have been handled by the sculptor to say something very unique, something very specific, really. I'm interested in the sort of shape and dynamics of the world, as it were. Um, I like geography and physical things and geology. Uh, my the job really is to to expose yourself to materials, see what they can do, see what they make you feel, uh, and be influenced by them, be influenced by them in space, them in relation to gravity. And then the same with um, with both Sakari and um, and Marie Therese. They work with their materials and then they paint them. So the colour is added on top of the forms to enhance the forms. I mean, the other thing with Sakari's work that I really liked is obviously she's focusing 
on elements of, um, of African culture, which is celebrated through dress and textiles. And when I looked at her work, it was really obvious that actually she wasn't designing the, the, the fabrics that, that the sculptures wear. She's drawing into those sculptures. She's drawing into the metal and creating textile patterns almost organically. And so they've got a very tactile quality to them. You know, you, you kind of want to touch them because they've been made by somebody's hand. And I think that's a really interesting idea. Londonia doesn't have any features. And she doesn't have any features because it's quite an old work. And um, at one time, I used to believe that if I made things too realistic, they'd come to haunt me. So I was quite happy to just do a vague sketch of what had um, excited me or amused me. So that you're concentrating on the fabric and imagining that you could be in this woman's kit. We've got Marie Therese Ross's birds kind of, you know, almost flying in that space. And I think people will make connections with you know, Marie Therese's work that where she's looked at Dylan Thomas's poetry and of course she's got she's got a sound piece with hers as well. So it's multi-sensorial as well. Hmm. I use a lot of found objects. So I am that strange person who wanders around streets and if you dump something on your on the pavement outside your house, I might pop up and st- start dragging it away (laughs) and yeah so found objects sometimes spark things but they quite often sit for a long long time in my studio doing nothing and then one day I'm trying to make something and I look around and I think yeah that'll do. Because I think actually artists are witnesses, we observe things. We're not always the massively active people. We're really observing things and then absorbing things and then creating. I think that's why art is really, really important because when we find past civilizations, we find their art and we put a lot together about who they were, what was important to them, even what they ate. All sorts of things are revealed in art. So I feel like that's what's drives me that I not the idea that my work will be discovered in thousands of years but the idea that it has to mean something and be a sort of witness well the title material matters um, has kind of meaning in a sort of twofold meaning really so we've got the idea of material the stuff that that the sculptors manipulate to create something which is quite unique, a sculpture. It's not something we use in a design sense. We don't sit on it, but they're using the material to say something with it, but also matter is transformed as well. So it's that we're using matter to make something. And then, of course, there's the other meaning that it, it matters. The materials that we use matter because um, it's what we use to communicate the meaning within the sculpture. So that's how, in fact, it was a working title, really, but it just came out. Yeah, material matters. And it, it, to most sculptors who are handling materials, of course it does. I came across a quote uh, from Philip Pullman uh, the other day, a very succinct quote, which was, spirit is what matter does. And I like that quote. Uh, And of course, as I've said, I'm matter. Um, And one is looking for the spirit in material and, and trying to find ways to make it expresses that spirit. 